welcome to my journal and chat with me series. I set the series up like a podcast where you can work or journal and plan with the video in the background. If you want to, feel free to mute me and play your own music or just watch in silence if that's more of your thing. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a good week. In today's episode, we're going to talk briefly about my New York City trip since I actually have a full vlog planned for that one. But I did want to talk a bit about my solo traveling experience and why I think it was really good for my mental health. It's funny because I freaked out about having anxiety before the trip and I really wasn't sure what to expect. But everything turned out better than expected. I'd like to thank my pessimism for that. Maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I think pessimism is kind of healthy sometimes. Like when your expectations are so low and things turn out for the better, it just feels 10 times nicer. But anyway, before I dive in, I wanted to show you guys this beautiful package I got from The Crafting Witch. I love her art and have tons of her notebooks and stickers. This is an intention deck, so I'm hoping to pull one I like and add it to my front flap here on uh, my Filofax personal. I also got this beautiful Capricorn sticker and I'm going to add this as a decorative piece as well. So if you're interested in her products, I'll add a link down in the description for you guys. Okay, so when it comes to independency, I feel like I lost a lot of that. Once I moved in with my partner, I've been with him for four years now and I definitely leaned a lot on him to be my emotional support person. And especially when he had met me, I was really at the height of my anxiety disorder and he helped me cope with a lot of that. It was really, really bad at one point. Like I actually took three months off from my previous job just because it was so hard to deal with and I could barely function like a normal person. So when you go through any kind of trauma and you lean a lot on a person, it really becomes hard to do anything without them. I've always been a pretty independent person, even in past relationships. I was always the type to need my personal space and would like my alone time. But with my current partner, I felt like he was the kind of person who would rather spend time around me than ever really need alone time. I don't necessarily think he's not an independent person because he definitely is, but because of how I am and because of my struggles, I think he just naturally took on sort of like this inadvertently caretaker role. <laughs> and in a sense, he kind of coddled me. I don't want to say coddled as a bad thing here, but he was just always there for me. And in the past, I didn't really feel like that with my partners. I think past partners really did not understand my anxiety, so their way of letting me cope with it was just like kind of letting me deal with it on my own, I guess. Hopefully that makes sense, but I do think there needs to be a healthy balance. Like, it's great that he's there for me and he's such a good person, you know, that helps me through my anxiety, but it has to be a balance because you just kind of end up leaning like way too much on that person and it starts to get hard to like do anything without them and I think that's where it can get really like iffy like you just start to lose your independency you start to like lose your sense of self a little bit so trying to just rediscover myself is definitely something that I'm working on just because again like having that independency, having that dependency on a person, like, it really makes it hard for you to just do anything without them. This solo trip to New York City really gave me back that sense of independency that I haven't felt in so long. Like, it's weird because I've always traveled back to LA for like weeks at a time and I didn't really feel like that anxious about it, but I suppose that's because LA is my home and I've lived there for over 20 years. So my friends and family live there, but New York City is still very much a new city for me. So it definitely felt more jarring to travel there alone. In the past, I've always been there with friends or like my partner. 
So basically I just planned out places I wanted to check out and then walked around majority of the time. I walked about 10 miles each day. I mean, I think it's so easy to get your steps in while you're there. Literally, there's stores and markets on every block, every corner. So that's one thing I love about NYC. Like, you can just walk or subway everywhere. I spent a lot of my time at bookstores, coffee shops, shopping areas, and of course, the parks. I love New York City parks. There's like, there's just nothing quite like them. It's such an interesting contrast of seeing all this greenery, like right in the middle of a concrete jungle, you know, full of high rises and skyscrapers and the hustle and bustle um, in one of the busiest cities in the world. Um, for the longest time, I felt like I became a boring person. I was getting old, boring, no friends, and I really lost my sense of self. But being alone by myself in a city that's full of people from all kinds of backgrounds made me feel sort of seen. Like, there are so many people in New York City that are doing things on their own as well. So I definitely feel like it's a great city for single people or those who enjoy their solo solitude. So we're going to pivot a bit and talk about impulsive spending or impulsive shopping addiction um, and how it's related with ADHD and also just like how to cope with some of that and like coping with debt. Um, of course, I knew that going to New York City would mean I was going to I was going to do some financial damage. Um, <laughs> I had planned this like way way before the trip even happened so i mean it was impulsive it was like half impulsive but also like i just love shopping so quick background story in the beginning of 2023 i had about 25k in credit card debt it was really bad impulsive spending and shopping addictions are pretty prevalent in those who have adhd um, for those who aren't ADHD but have the same problem, a lot of times it has to do with filling a void of some sort, like feeling like things can fulfill you because something else is lacking in your personal life, like that kind of thing. Sometimes it's just a case of having too much disposable income and the desire to look a certain way or impress society in some way. There's so many reasons why people have this problem. And for me, it's the hyperfixation. Um, and just in case you're not diagnosed, but suspected you may, like maybe you have always suspected you had ADHD, hyperfixation is a huge, huge sign. Basically, hyperfixation is what it sounds like. It's when you get super focused on the idea of something and you really cannot walk away from it until you bring that idea into fruition or purchase the thing or do the thing. It's kind of like how dogs are with treats or if they see something, they will sit there and stare until they get a piece of your dinner or get the treat. Most people are able to control that intrusion of thought. But with ADHD, it's almost impossible. For me, if I obsess about a bag, for example, I will not be able to concentrate on anything until I get it. Like, nothing. I just, I will be laser focused on watching every piece of content imaginable that I can find on that bag. And I will keep on obsessing over it until I get that bag. I had to remove all of my cards from Amazon, from Apple Pay, etc. Because that's how I racked up 25k in credit card debt. Although it did help, I'm still not able to really control that impulsiveness when I shop in person especially. And the only way I'm able to stop it is if I'm with my partner, if I'm being really honest. Um, he knows how to deal with it. Um, but when I'm by myself, like there's just, there's no way I can control it really it's like i have zero willpower that being said this is another aspect where i've sort of leaned on my partner for help and i just really don't trust myself like shopping alone um i also hate shopping with my partner though <laughs> so he is the complete opposite of me when it comes to spending he doesn't buy very many things and he never really randomly buys anything 
So the only time he really spends money on personal objects was for like his hockey ephemera because he's a big hockey person. Um, but otherwise, he doesn't really spend money on it like things um, or anything really. I'd like to ideally have a healthy balance of that, like somewhere between the like how he is with money and how I am with money. I don't want to buy like so many things anymore, but I also don't want to be that minimalistic. You know, I am working my ass off. Like I want to reap some of the benefits of working this corporate job and, you know, just, I, it, I think it's healthy to buy some things and enjoy some things. You only have one life, right? Um, but it has to be a healthy balance. It's always about a balance. So I am happy to share that I have since paid off my 25k credit card debt. Um, there's really no magic formula or get rich scheme used to do this. I, I'm, I'm not gonna sell you a uh, seminar or a course on how I got rid of my credit card debt in less than a year. Um, but I simply just worked my ass off. I mean, really, I worked a lot. I worked on weekends. I was freelancing in 2023 and I just took on every client I possibly could. I reduced the clutter in my apartment, sold a bunch of stuff and rarely went out to eat. It took me a little under a year to pay it all off. And um, actually, and I'd like to think I make average income like on a normal basis. Like I usually, I, I feel like I make an average amount. Um, and I just worked so many extra like hours, so many extra clients, so many like just like so many added things that for a moment I really felt like I was rich and then I had to pay off all of my credit card debt. So yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things you have to ask yourself like, is it, are these things like truly worth it? I absolutely love handbags and, and um, other leather goods like um, journals and all that. I love all of these like hobbies that I'm into, but sometimes I have to step back and ask if it's just worth it to go back into that debt. And the answer is no, it's never worth to rack up credit card debt. It's so stressful. And then you feel like you work really hard and all that money just goes down the drain. But in reality, you know, that money <laughs> was... It was never like free. Like when I buy something with my credit card, I know that it feels like it's free at the moment, but it's not. I know I have to pay it back. So you just don't really mentally feel the rewardy, like the reward like center of your brain doesn't really go off when you have to pay off a credit card debt, even though technically you are paying off for what you bought right but it's just like the reward center of your brain doesn't see it that way it sees it as like you're just throwing down money down the drain <laughs> which kind of sucks but that's exactly why um being in credit card debt is not great for your mental it's just it's not good for your actual money like you have to pay fees you have to pay interest so definitely credit card debt is just not worth it. It's so much more wor like rewarding if you just buy something with cash that you saved up or extra cash that you worked for. It's just so much more rewarding that way. So um, that's a life lesson I've learned um, from racking up 25k credit card debt because 25k is like crazy. So yeah, I would like to think on average, I do make just like a normal income, like middle class, I guess. Um, I've actually had some friends ask me how I was able to afford my Dior bags. And for the bags, how I afford them is a little bit different. So the fact of the matter is I've always had designer bags like since I was in college. So of course I did accrue a lot of credit card debt during the years to pay off those bags. But I was also making average to low income back then. So really just very, very bad financial decisions and habits. Um, now, even though I still struggle with that, I have a much more healthy way of going about it. At least I think it's a healthier way of going about it. So for one, um, like I said, credit card debt is a big fat no-no. Like just that I just remember the amount of stress I was stressing out about my credit karma, like credit score 
being in the like absolute just being in absolute shambles like <laughs> it just stressed me out like so many things stress me out about being in credit card debt it is never ever worth it um so that's one thing um and i went from using maybe five to seven different cards because i opened up a bunch of credit cards um because i never had a good credit score since i was always using my like maxing my cards and so none of my cards had a like very big balance um like most cards only had like 800 to a thousand dollars for a credit limit so i had like five to seven different cards and now i only use two so one is for airline miles since i travel frequently um especially back to california and the other is cash back on groceries. So it's kind of like a groceries and food only card. I still use my cards to pay for everything, but now I just pay it off by the end of each month. I absolutely refuse <laughs> to get into debt again. Like I cannot stress this enough. Since I have always had designer things though, I will say that yes, it was really stupid to get into credit card debt, but I have since paid, since I have paid it off now um, and I'm constantly rotating out my bags, I feel like I do have like disposable income bag money in a sense because I'm constantly buying and selling my bags, if that makes sense. Um, this is also a reason why I don't want to make a bag collection video yet. I know a lot of people will comment you know, like show your bag collection or show your coach bag collection. Um, it's hard because I'm constantly selling or returning bags um, because I change my mind all the time. The general rule for me now with handbags is if I get a new one, out goes an old one. And that's a non-negotiable. I also do budget for my hobbies. So I allot myself for some cash for whatever I want. But this is the way I've been coping with my impulse buys. Honestly, it's it's kind of like shopping my own closet in a sense also. Um, so for those of you who follow my bag videos and community updates about handbags or whatever, just know when I get a brand new bag, something else had to go to compensate. So that is really why I can't do a collection video. I feel like it's changing so often. I'm also just actively trying to downsize my bag collection because there are some that just sit in my closet and never see the light of day. And if something doesn't work for me, I don't really have a heart or I, yeah, if something doesn't work for me, I don't really have a hard time letting it go. And I'd like to thank my ADHD for that. If there's a silver lining to it, it's definitely that. <laughs> At least that's like one sort of positive thing about ADHD. I will never be a hoarder. Like I love getting rid of stuff. I just wish I could stop buying stuff too. So yeah, I mean, th I have made some top, like top five videos and stuff like that. I will probably do another like top fives, either like coach or non-coach related. Um, I will probably show some collection pieces. Like I am thinking of doing a video for, um, like coach bags or other brands, um, like bags, I will probably never, ever sell like my forever pieces. And there's only so many of those that I would actually like legitimately feel like they're forever pieces. So that might be a video that, um, could be coming along <laughs> for the bag content but yeah it's definitely hard to do a collections video because um i'm constantly rotating out my stuff but i am slowly but surely building a forever piece collection and um basically what that means is just like i'm really trying to evaluate how often i wear certain bags and then everything else that really barely gets touched unless it has sentimental value I'm probably just going to try and get rid of. I would like in an ideal world, <laughs> I would like to downsize my collection to about 10 bags. And I say that reluctantly because I right now I have like over 30 
Um, so, uh, having 10 bags would definitely be a challenge of all challenges for me. However, I really am kind of looking for quality over quantity now. Um, especially as I get, get older, I really just hate having clutter in my house. So, or in my apartment. So, um, I'm kind of working on that, but, um, it's, it's definitely going to be a challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on any of the topics we discussed. And I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your evening or day, wherever you are in the world. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.